Hello, this is Jack and welcome to Never A Truer Word, where we look at the words that people choose to use to see if they're telling the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. And we're looking at this guy today, Scott Peterson. We're going inside the police interview that he gave Christmas Eve, the day that Lacey went missing. So this is going to be fascinating. It's his first chance on the record to tell the story that he's got to tell. If he's being honest, he'll just get it all out there. If he's hiding something, then this is going to be the first time he's really had to hide it. So what are we going to notice? Remember, lying is hard. When you're lying, you've got to make up a story. So that's extra effort when you're telling the truth. Yeah, just let the truth come out. When you're lying, you've got to make up that story. You've got to create it in your head. So it's using up extra energy. And while you're making up that story, you have to remember that you're making it up in the real world. So it has to match the truth. Facts as other people will know them. And I think we'll see that potentially happening with Scott throughout this interview. And it has to be compatible with your other lies. You have to remember the story you made up much harder than remembering something that actually happened to you. So you have to remember that. You have to make sure it all adds up so you don't contradict yourself. It's just uh, really hard to lie. It's much easier to tell the truth, which is why very often the way that people will deceive us is not by lying to us. It's about omitting things and telling the truth, but a very limited version of the truth. So we're going to be in the interview room with Scott. We're going to analyse some of the answers that he gave to the detective the night he reported Lacey was missing. And I'm not the only one doing the work in this episode. I want you to do some work too. So during the police interview, Scott takes a phone call and I want you to listen to just his side of that phone call and see if you can spot the big red flag that's in it. Are you ready? Let's listen. Amy. Amy. Yeah. Oh, I don't know where are you at now? In front of my our house? Okay. Yeah, um where you're gonna stay at your place obviously where Nate and Frank going. Okay. Yeah, um, I don't know. Okay. Thanks, I appreciate that. Yeah. Can I give you a call back for a while? Thanks, Amy. Did you spot it? Let us know in the chat or in the comments if you spotted it. I'll give you the answer uh, that I spotted at least at the end of this episode. So let's look at how Scott began that police interview. So today, just tell me about the morning. Um, okay. <sighs> I don't know what time we got up, probably, uh, Lacey got up and went and, um, assumed had, that she had some show for breakfast. She mm -hmm. eats right when she wakes up, otherwise she gets sick because she's pregnant. Um, I laid around in bed longer, I got up at, uh, 8 o'clock probably or so. Uh, showered. Um, we were watching her favorite show, Martha Stewart. Watched a little bit of that. You didn't watch the whole thing, though? No. You remember what part you saw? I mean, I don't know what to... Uh, I'm cooking the old I don't know. Okay. Cookies of some sort. They're talking about what to do with meringue. Um, and I, I can't remember, your house, you had the, the converted garage area, is that your TV room like? Or yeah. Is that where you were then? Okay, did you eat any breakfast? Yeah, I was here. So that's the beginning of the interview and the detective says, so just tell me about the morning. And Peterson says, um, okay, uh, I don't know what time we got up. Probably uh, Lacey got up and went and um, I assume had she had some cereal for breakfast. So the question is put to him. Tell me about the morning. And remember, this is Christmas Eve. It's maybe 12 hours prior. And he has to really think about his answer. He doesn't just say, 
what it is that he wants to say. He gives it, um, okay. Uh, so he's thinking here. Now, is he buying himself thinking time to construct an answer to the question? That's highly possible here. But just tell me about the morning. He doesn't start right away talking. He really buys himself some thinking time with long pauses and, um, okay, ah. Uh, and then he gives this first answer read right about what time they got up. And look at how vague this is. I don't know what time we got up, he says. I don't know what time we got up. Probably uh, Lacey got up and um, I assume had some cereal for breakfast. So he doesn't commit to anything there whatsoever. It's I don't knows, probably, and I assumes. I'm interested here. The detective says, tell me about the morning. So it's a wide open question. He could say anything he wants about the morning. He's got a fishing trip to talk about. He has got, you know, the fact they got up and planned their day together to talk about or anything like that whatsoever. And he starts at the very beginning of the morning. And that is very beginning of the morning. And really what he's saying is he and Lacey were apart. If you notice there, he says, I don't know what time we got up. But then the, he separates them. Lacey got up at a different time. So doesn't quite hang together there, does it? He doesn't say Lacey got up first, don't know what time. It's I don't know what time we got up. Probably Lacey got up first. So there's just nothing definite. Look, question we're all asking here is, was Lacey really there at that point? And this answer doesn't convince me that she was. He says that she had some cereal for breakfast. Now, look, I the way I work, I try not to know too much about the background um, of the case. I can't help noticing that in the face-to-face -face interview he did with Peacock recently, when he was asked about his memories of Casey, he mentioned they used to share the same cereal bowl. Now, I don't know, really don't know. Maybe someone could let me know in the comments. But what did cereal bowls come into the evidence um, that was in the house that morning? For example, was there just one cereal bowl? And someone said, why did only one person have breakfast? I don't know. But he mentioned cereal there in his very first recorded interview after Lacey went missing. And in his most recent recorded interview, he's tw over 20 years later, he's still banging on about cereal. Was cereal really important to him that morning? The detective says, mm-hmm. So just let's, um, Scott, just give him all the space to say something else. And he says, she eats right when she wakes up. Otherwise, she gets sick because she is pregnant. And I, I laid a bit in bed longer. I got up, uh, I don't know, eight o'clock probably or so, uh, showered. And um, we were watching her favourite show, Martha Stewart. Watch that, a little bit of that. So now he's, once again... They're separate. I laid in bed a little bit longer. Now, he doesn't know when Lacey got up. Did Lacey get up before him? The language that he uses to do this is just not convincing. At one point, he's like, we got up. What time we got up? And then he's saying they got up at different times. He talks about Lacey's conditions. She eats right when she wakes up. Otherwise, she gets sick because she's pregnant is what he said. That's in general. That's not about that morning, is it? It's just in general. She eats when she wakes up. Otherwise, she gets sick because she's pregnant. So that's he's asked about that morning and he's explaining life in general. Let's look at his pronoun use in this section. It's very good. She eats right when she wakes up because she's pregnant. I laid in bed longer. I got up. Uh, we were watching her favourite show. Pronouns are missing in a couple of places there. He just goes, uh, showered. Uh, and um, we watched our favourite show, Martha Stewart watched a little bit of that. So he doesn't say I showered and he doesn't say we watched a little bit of that. When there's no pronoun use in there, um, there is a lack of commitment to it. So um, look, break this down. She eats when she wakes up in general and he's attaching pronouns to it. So I believe that. I was in bed longer than Lacey. I believe that. I got up. Yeah, obviously he got up that day. Um, but then the shower and watching Martha Stewart. He does say we were watching her favourite show, Martha Stewart. Nice that he drops in as her favourite show, by the way, just to show that he really knows her. But yeah, did they really watch a little bit of that? The lack of a pronoun in front of that suggests to me I've got some questions there. The detective says, you didn't watch the whole thing, though. Peterson says, no. He says, do you remember what part you saw? And he says, I don't know. I don't know what they had on. Some cooking deal. I don't know. Cookies of some sort. They were talking about what to do with meringue. So a really straightforward answer to the question. You didn't watch the whole thing, though. No, that suggests to me, damn honest, it's a yes-no show. You didn't watch the whole thing, though. Yes, we did. No, we didn't. And he just comes out straight away with a no. 
And then this, which part of the show did you see? Man, he talks around the house. He's on this. He starts with, I don't know. Then he says, I don't know what they had on. Some cooking deal. Well, that's a real, that's going on a flyer with the Martha Stewart show, isn't it? That there was some cooking on it. Uh, then he says, I don't know. Again, cookies of some sort. Yeah, Martha Stewart's well known for doing cookies. And then he does finally get into talking about meringue that's on the show as if he wasn't paying a lot of attention to what was in Martha Stewart that morning. Did he have something else on his mind? And then Burkini, the detective says to him, uh, I can't remember your house. You had the converted garage area. Is that your TV room, right? And Peterson says, yeah. Is, is that where um, you were in then? And did you eat any breakfast? And he says, yeah, I had a bowl of cereal. So one really straight answer. Yeah, that's where the TV room is. And another one. Yeah, I had a bowl of cereal. Once again, cereal popping up in this. So already we've got some thinking about the answer before he says it. We've got a lack of pronouns and we've got a lot of vagueness about what happened first thing in the morning. Have another listen. So today... Tell me about the morning. Um, okay. Uh, I don't know what time we got up. Probably, uh, Lacey got up and went and, um, assumed had, that she had some show for breakfast. She mm-hmm. eats right when she wakes up, otherwise she gets sick because she's pregnant. Um, I laid around the bed longer. I got up at, uh, 8 o'clock probably or so. Uh, showered and um, we were watching her favorite show Martha Stewart watched a little bit of that you didn't watch the whole thing though no you remember what part you saw I mean I don't know what the what the cooking deal I don't know Cookies of some sort. They're talking about what to do with meringue. Um, and I, I can't remember your house. You had the, the converted garage area. Is that your TV room, like? Or yeah. Is that where you were then? Okay. Did you eat any breakfast? Yeah. Well, sure. We're back with Scott soon. If you're enjoying this, if you can hit the like or the plus button, the heart button, wherever you can see in front of you, that helps this get to more people. And there is not another breakdown of this Scott Peterson interview like this anywhere. So it would really help get it out to people who are interested. And there's a renewed interest in this case. If you want more episodes like this, the subscribe or follow buttons mean you will get them delivered to you automatically. I'm always interested to hear in your comments as well. So if you've got any comments, leave them here if you can or get in touch on social media. You can find all the links in the show description. If you want more, if you want episodes like this before anyone else and exclusive episodes, then on YouTube, you can become a channel member. Or if you're on Spotify, then you can subscribe to the channel and you will get exclusive episodes and you will get early access to the big episodes like this as well. Right, let's go back to Scott now. And the detective is going to ask him more questions about what happened in the morning. Okay, and then, uh, what, then what? Um, when did you realize you were going to go fishing? Well, that was a morning decision. It's either go, go play golf at the club or, or go fishing. Um, okay. It seemed too cold to go play golf at the club, so, um, you know, just decided to, you know, 9 30 or whatever that. Mm-hmm told what she was going to do for the day and okay so Bob she told you what she was going to do for the day yeah and what was that um she's going to finish cleaning up like I said she's locked in the kitchen for her um take the dog for a walk and then she's going to the store to buy for Christmas morning breakfast tomorrow and that was going to be a involved prep so that was her afternoon is prepping the breakfast and she's gonna make gingerbread cookies for tonight what was she mommy the tile in the entryway area the entry of your front door or the entry of your little interior converted uh when i felt the um well, not the front door, but that back door that we came in. Right, where the mop was outside of it? No. Oh, where, oh, where your dogs? 
the one out to your well, right here? Okay, if you have the converted garage, yeah. right, then you have the kitchen, yeah. then you have a room with two chairs in it, right. and, uh, yeah, that room okay. in the kitchen. Uh, okay. I don't know how far you plan to go. She had me put the, uh, the bucket by the front door for her. So if you remember, Scott had set up the, the getting up and the having cereal and the detective says, OK, and then uh, then what? And Peterson says, um, and it's a big pause. Now, look, this was Christmas Eve. Uh, Christmas Day was the next day he was going to go fishing that day. It was the first time he'd ever been fishing in his new boat, as the story goes, that he tells. And when he's asked, and then what? He does the big um, pause. Buying t thinking time again, I believe, is what's happening there. The detective says, when did you realise you were going to go fishing? And Peterson says, well, that was a morning decision. It's either go play golf at the club or go fishing. The detective says, OK. And Peterson says, it seemed too cold to play golf at the club. Gives a little chuckle as he's saying that. So, um, yeah, just decided that, you know, might as well do that. What do I spot here? Look, the detective says, when did you realise you were going to go fishing when did you realise you were going to go fishing? So he's looking for a, a time there, whether that is a time on the clock or whether that is a specific time when. And Peterson says that was a morning decision. So he really widens it out. Not a first thing in the morning decision, not about half past eight. I realised it was very cold. So that's uh, decided I was going to go fishing. Just that was a morning decision decision. It was made that morning. So he's asked about a specific time or a specific moment and he widens it out to really, you know, a 12-hour window, strict definitions, probably kind of four-hour window um, if we look at the, the reality of the situation. But also he's talking about the concept of the decision. Um, that So, you know, when did you realise you were going to go fishing? It was a morning decision. He doesn't answer that question. What he wants to say was, I decided that this morning. When he's explaining why he did that, he gives that little chuckle as he said, it seemed too cold to play golf at the club. And then he tries to make the decision to go fishing sound really relaxed and casual and almost trivial there. So, um, yeah, just decided that, you know, might as well do that. Why does he want to make that sound so trivial? Just decided, you know, might as well do that. The word just is in there. One of the words that always puts me on alert for deception. And I think here he's using just to say, just that's this is all that was going through in my mind was it was too cold. So, hey, might as well go fishing. Just decided that, you know, might as well do that. The detective says, uh huh. And Peterson said, she told me what she was going to do that day. Um, and then the detective says, oh, she told you what she was going to do for the day. Peterson says, yeah, this is extra. She told me what she was going to do for the day. He wasn't talking about that. He decides that he wants to volunteer this up. And the detective says, and what was it that, what was that? What was she going to do that day? And Peterson says, ah, she was going to finish cleaning up. Like I said, she was mopping the kitchen floor, uh, take the dog for a walk. And then she was going to go to the store to buy for Christmas morning breakfast tomorrow. And that was going to be an involved prep. So that was going to be her afternoon prepping the breakfast. And she was going to make gingerbread cookies for tonight. So the very first thing he focuses on, the, the orders are so important. She was going to finish cleaning up. And it's that word finish that gets me. She was going to finish cleaning up. There's been no start to the cleaning up. You know, We weren't told, and he's been explaining all the things that have been happening, that Lacey was cleaning up and she was going to finish cleaning up. Maybe it was finishing from the night before, but he doesn't say why she was going to finish cleaning up. But the first thing he says, and he's going to mention mopping a hell of a lot, the first thing he mentions is mopping this kitchen floor. He says she was going to finish up like I said she was mopping the kitchen floor. Now, like I said means, I've said this before, and very often in deception I see this, like I said, or as I've said before, or I've always said. People think that if you've said it a lot of times, it must be true or it must be more convincing because I've said it a lot of times. Look, my story's congruent. Like I said, she was mopping the kitchen floor. So was she mopping the kitchen floor? Like I said, puts me on alert again for deception. What comes after the like I said, or as I've said before, just look at it, interrogate it. And I can see already mopping the kitchen floor is really, really sensitive to him. 
interesting here that um, there's a lot in the past tense. She was going to finish cleaning up. She was, uh, she was mopping the kitchen floor. She was going to the store. She was going to be an involved prep. Uh, she was going to be making gingerbread cookies for tonight. Now, there's part of me that wants to find that really suspicious. He's talking about Lacey in the past tense. Does he already know she's gone? But it's kind of natural, isn't it, when you're talking about what someone was going to do that morning, to use that past tense uh, to talk about it. She was planning on um, doing this or that, but I'm interested. It's all, she was going to, she was going to, she was going to, she was going to. There was not, she was planning, she wanted to. Um, she had to. There's nothing there. It's only all said with the same thing. She was going to. She was going to. She was going to. But do you spot the one thing that doesn't have that? She was going to there. It's take the dog for a walk. She was mopping the kitchen floor. Uh, take the dog for a walk. Now, as we know, Lacey was not walking the dog at that point. According to everyone she knew, she was eight months pregnant and found walking and walking the dog especially extremely hard to do. So they doubt that Lacey wanted to walk the dog that Christmas Eve morning. And look, he doesn't put Lacey in there at all. He's dropped Lacey from the whole thing around walking the dog. And then next, there's just a lot of detail about um, where she was mopping. He really knows where she was mopping and he maps it out in great detail. He is spurred on by the detective to really um, say the locations that were being mopped. Potentially, the detective is very suspicious that there was some mopping went on in that house on that day. So he wants to nail down exactly where was being mopped. But Scott is all over the detail of the mopping. So think about how he only assumes she had cereal for breakfast and in general she has, she eats when she wakes up otherwise she feels sick and I don't know what time she got up, I don't know what time I got up but man, he knows the mopping mapping like nothing else. Why would that be? Why would he have that mopping right down on Pat? He didn't even mention the shopping, the shops that she was going to. Didn't mention what shopping she was going to buy. He just said she was prepping uh, the Christmas breakfast, but didn't actually say what it was that she wanted to buy, what type of shops, what shops she was going to, where the shops were. Nothing, no detail like that around the shopping, but around the mopping that Lacey was going to do. Man, he knows a lot. Now, do you have a significant other in your life? Think about the last time they cleaned something or mopped the floor. Do you know they were mopping? Yeah, I might well know they were mopping. Do you know exactly to an inch where they were mopping? Me neither, which is why this is really important, I think, in this. Mopping is very, very sensitive to Scott Peterson. Finally, he says, yeah, that room in the kitchen. So this is him talking about the room that was being mopped. Yeah, that room in the kitchen. Uh, there were a lot of places she planned to go. She had put the, uh, she had me put the uh, bucket by the front door for her. This is really out of time. So that room in the kitchen, she had a lot of places she planned to go. So once again, just a lot of places she planned to go. She had me put the bucket by the front door for her. So if she was finishing cleaning up, she obviously needed Scott's help to move the bucket or was that bucket moved by the front door so she could start cleaning up? I don't know. Or is this Scott explaining why his fingerprints might be on the mop handle or the mop bucket? I don't know what, but man... The detail he goes into around mopping and really, really, really suspicious. Let's have another listen to that. Okay, and then uh, what? Um, when did you realize you were gonna go fishing? Oh, well, that was a morning decision. It's if it was a morning, so play golf at the club or, or go fishing. Okay. Um, seemed too cold to go play golf at the club, so. Um, you know, just decided to, you know, 9.30 or whatever that. Mm -hmm. Just told what she was going to do for the day and... Okay, so Bob, she told you what she was going to do for the day? Yeah. And what was that? Um, she's going to finish cleaning up. Like I said, she's locked in the kitchen floor. Um, take the dog for a walk. And then she's going to the store to buy for Christmas morning breakfast tomorrow. And that was going to be a involved prep. So that was her afternoon, just prepping the breakfast. And she's going to make gingerbread cookies for tonight. 
what was she mommy? The tile in the entryway area. The entry of your front door or the entry of your little interior converted? Uh, when I, oh, the, um, well, not the front door, but that back door that we came in. Right, where the mop was outside of it? No. no, no. Oh, where you, oh, where your dogs weren't out to your well, backyard? Well, okay, if you have the converted garage, yeah. right, then you have the kitchen, yeah. then you have a room with two chairs in it. Right. Uh, yeah, that room okay. in the kitchen. No, I don't know how far she planned to go. She had me put the, uh, the bucket by the front door for her. Scott then goes on to talk about his uh, fishing trip and he tells the detective how he travelled there and the detective then asks him some more about what he got up to when he was fishing. Okay, so if you got to the about five minutes to one, you get your boat in, how long do you think you stayed in the water? Uh, felt like an hour and a half or so, but I didn't have to watch or anything, but see if I was getting home at 30. Did you have a map for that area or? No. Would you just wing it? Mm -hmm. So you just, when you got in your boat and you took off, did you go very far or? Well, I mean, right a couple miles went north, um, found a, like a little island kind of deal there. Mm -hmm. um, island uh, had a bunch of trash on it. I remember a big sign that said no landing. It looked like some broken piers around it. And I just assumed it'd be a, Decent, you know, shallow area. Did you troll? A little bit. I mean, a lot of, a lot of the reason I went was just to get that boat in the water to see, you know, yeah. So the detective says, OK, so you got about five minutes to one, you get your boat in, how long do you think you stayed in the water? Pete, Scott Peterson's answer is, uh, felt like an hour and a half or so, but like, I, I'm i trying to think, but see, if I was getting home at 4.30, quarter two, I don't know, hour and a half, I guess, probably be accurate. Now, this is Scott being honest. When someone lets us into their thinking, when they're thinking out loud and working out mathematical problems like this, that is an indication of honesty. And look, that doesn't mean that he did not murder Lacey. What it is, is, is this part here, he has no sensitivity. He's not trying to hide how long he was out on the water or the journey that he took on the way back or the time of that journey that he took on the way back or the time that he got home. So none of this is sensitive to him at all because he's quite happy to just go out there and think out loud. You will notice that he's thinking out loud uh, and working it back from the journey. So what time he got home and how long the journey took. So that will say how long he was out on the water. He's not thinking out loud about what it was that he did when he was on the water. He's not willing to think out loud about that. Because listen, when we think out loud, we do let our truthful, genuine thoughts come out. You try it at some point. Try and think out loud, but lie about what you're thinking about. It's really, really hard to do. So he's not thinking out loud about the time he spent on the water, which is the question he was asked. How long did you stay in the water? He's like, yeah, I went up north and then, um, well, then I think it was about two o'clock I turned round. So yeah, maybe he doesn't do that. What he does is he works it out around the journey. He's not hiding the journey back, the time he got home at all. So this is Scott Peterson being honest, but look at how narrow that honesty is. He's then asked, uh, did you have a map of that area? He says, no, you just wing it. He says, mm-hmm, an affirmative, yeah. Look, really easy to answer questions that are just answered with no and yes. The detective says, so you just got in your boat and you took off. Did you get very far? Peterson says, well, I mean, probably a couple of miles. I went north, uh, found uh, like a little island kind of deal there. The detective goes up, mm-hmm. And Peterson says, an island uh, had a bunch of trash on it. I remember a big sign that said no landing, looked like some broken piers around it. I just assumed it would be a decent, you know, shallow area. Interesting answer. He's asked, did you go very far? And he answers, probably a couple of miles. So he does answer the question, did you go very far? Scott Peterson says, probably a couple of miles. And then he starts going extra. 
I went north, you weren't asked which direction you went in, and also we, you weren't asked if you found an island or, or anything at all there. And it, then it just goes on with extra detail that he has not been asked for, as if to show that he has really been to and seen this island. There was a bunch of trash on it. I remember a big sign that said no landing, looked like some broken piers around it. That's more detail than he had about what he had for breakfast or what Lacey did in the morning, isn't it? So he really wants us to know that he remembers this island. And then he says, I just assumed it would be a decent, you know, shallow area. If you want some homework, watch this episode again or watch the police interview with Scott again. And look at how often he says assumed. Assumed comes up quite a lot from Scott. He likes making assumptions. Um, it'd be interesting to know if there's any patterns around his assumptions. I haven't looked into that. I just think it would be something that would be interesting to do. The policeman says, did you troll? And he says a little bit. I mean, a lot of, lot of the reason I went was just to get the boat in the water to see, you know? So here we go. It's the yes, no show. Did you troll? Yes, I did. You, no, I didn't. But he doesn't say yes or no. He goes, little bit. So that's a very strange, non-committal answer to that question. And in fact, he then goes, I mean, a lot of the reason was just to get the boat in the water, you know? A lot of the reason I went was just to get the boat in the water to see. He described it as a fishing trip earlier. That was what he said. In the morning, he decided to go on a fishing trip, not to go and get the boat in the water. I get, I understand you've got a new boat and you want to get it out in the water, see how it sails, see what it's like, see if you can handle it. But that's not how he described it first thing in the morning. First thing in the morning, it was a fishing trip. Now, it's not a fishing trip anymore, especially when he's asked, did you catch any fish? Did you did you try and catch any fish? And he's like, no, no not really. You know, I wasn't really going to fish. It actually was just going to sail the boat. Lots to look at in that answer. Have another listen. Okay, so if you got to the about five minutes to one, you get your boat in, how long do you think you stayed in the water? Um, felt like an hour and a half or so. But I didn't have to watch or anything, but see if I was getting home at 30 or two. I don't know, an hour and a half, I guess, probably accurate. Uh, did you have a map for that area, or? No. Would you just wing it? Mm -hmm. So you just, when you got in your boat and you took off, did you go very far, or? Well, I mean, probably a couple miles. I went north, um, found a, like a little island kind of deal there. Mm -hmm. um, Island uh, had a bunch of trash on it. I remember a big sign that said no landing. It looked like some broken piers around it. I just assumed it'd be a decent, you know, shallow area. Did you troll? A little bit. I mean, a lot of a lot of the reason I went was just to get that boat in the water to see. You know, yeah. At the beginning of this episode, I spoke about how one of the things you have to do if you're lying and deceiving is make sure that what you're saying matches the truth as it is widely known or widely accepted. For example, if someone has witnessed you doing something, if someone saw you somewhere at a certain time, it's stupid to tell a lie about that and to say that they, they didn't see you, this could not have happened. It's better to tell the truth about that. Is that what is happening here? Okay, so you fish in 90 minutes about then what? You go back to your, go back to the marina, get back in your boat. Yeah. You see anybody? You talk to anybody out there? Um, talked to a couple guys fishing, asked me, you know, to catch anything, and then no, they didn't either. Um, the guys working fixing uh, maintenance, maintenance guys got a good laugh from me trying to back down the trailer. Okay. Um, so a couple guys laughing and a couple guys talking about fishing. So that is just something that is probably, he doesn't want to lie about or is, is beneficial to uh, Scott that, look, uh, someone can place me at the marina at that time. And the way he answers is just so different from so many other answers that he gives all the way through this police interview. The question is, you see anybody, you talk to anybody out there? And he's dead straightforward. A couple of guys fishing, um, and this is what we talked about. They didn't catch anything either. And maintenance guys got a good laugh at me trying to back down the trainer. It's a very different pattern here from other answers that Scott 
gives in the interview. Have another listen. Okay, so you fish 90 minutes, about then what? You go back to your, go back to the marina, get back in your boat. Yeah. You see anybody? You talk to anybody out there? Um, talk to a couple guys fishing, asked me you know, to catch anything, and uh, they didn't either. Um, the guys working, fixing, uh, main, main, maintenance guys got a good laugh from me trying to back down the trailer. Okay. Um, so a couple guys laughing and a couple guys talking about fishing. The interview continues. Scott talks about his journey home from fishing and then the detective wants to talk to him about what happened once he got home. What did you do when you go in? Um, dog and the cat followed me in, so I jumped out that mop water because the cat went over to it. Where was the mop bucket? Um, if you remember uh, our front door, there's a little white piece, wood piece uh -huh. built in, just in front of that. Okay, so uh, your dog and cat come in with, through the doors and your cat goes over to this bucket. Yep. And what was it going to drink out of it or? Looked like it's me. So you just picked it up and walked it out the front door then? No, that little side door. Okay. So it was right outside of it. And then you just set it out there? No, it didn't set it in there. Were you calling for Lacey or? Oh yeah, of course. But she wasn't home? No. Assume she's at her mom's. You're, you put your jeans, your blue t-shirt, anything else in there? I think that green polo was in there too, wasn't it? Did you did you use did you start the washer? Yeah. Did you put soap? Mm -hmm. but, okay, then what? Uh grab some heat up from the fridge. Put the box out? Yeah, put it on the counter like it was, uh lots of milk. You had a glass of milk? No, small one, yeah. Okay, then you put it in glass? Yeah. How much pizza did you have? Um, I think just one full piece and have them bite another one. Scott is asked, so what do you do when you go in? And he said, ah, the dog and the cat followed me in, so I dumped out the mop water because the cat went over to it. Where was the mop bucket, he's asked. Peterson says, ah, you remember uh, our front door? There's a little white piece, wood piece built in just in front of that. The detective says to him, what did you do when you go in? And look what happens here. He doesn't say what he did when he went in. He starts telling some stories. Now, look, what did you do when you go in? He could have said, I dumped out the mop water. Could have said, I dumped out the mop water because the cat went over to it. But no, he's telling a story here. So in response to the question, what did you do when you go in? He has to explain what happens. And when someone has to explain something, there's always red flags. So he explains it by saying, ah, the dog and the cat followed me in, so I dumped out the mop water because the cat went over to it. Really out of time. Uh, he could have said it a bit more in time. What did you do when you went in? I dumped out the mop water because the dog and the cat, they'd followed me in and the cat went over to it. But no, this is all out of time. When, when What did you do when you go in? The dog and the cat followed me in. Nah, not buying that one at all. 
Then there is all this detail about the mop and just so much detail. Now, I think at this point, the detective knows that there's something up about this mop. It's the first thing he mentioned in Lacey's jobs for the day was the cleaning and the mopping. It's the first thing he mentions when he comes back is this mopping that has done. I think the detective gets this. I get it as well. Scott Peterson, of all the things that's happened to him that day, from waking up with his pregnant wife, in his words, going fishing, for the first time having a long two long journeys he really is obsessed with mopping and I think the detective gets that the detective then once he's gone through the the mop detail with Scott Peterson says then what do you do and Peterson says ah put my clothes in the washer took out those rags threw my clothes in there interesting he put his clothes in the washer twice in his telling of the story he put these clothes in the washer took out the rags threw my clothes in there when someone does something twice in a story, it doesn't quite make sense. When they have to go back in time to correct the story, which he does there by saying, oh, I took out the rags first, there's something going on there. The rags and the clothes in the washer, a little bit sensitive to Scott Peterson. Great question from the detective next. Were you calling for Lacey or what? And Scott Peterson says, yeah, of course. Now, of course, is a convincer because he's realised he screwed up here. The first thing he did was not shout out for Lacey or see if Lacey was at home. It was throw the mop bucket water out. Mm, interesting. So he's saying, of course, as if to say, yeah, look, of course I would do that. It's um, obvious I would do that. Please don't ask any more questions about this. Of course I was calling for Lacey. And guess what? Yeah, she wasn't around. Of course I was doing it. The detective says, but she wasn't at home. And he said, no, I assumed she was at her mom's. Gives no reason for this whatsoever. Now, remember, he went through Lacey's quite uh, extreme schedule for the day. You know, that was something that would be a lot for an eight-month pregnant woman to do. Um, but not once did he say she was going to call in on her mom or even drive around to see friends or do some Christmas errands visiting other people. None of that was there. So why did he assume she was at her mom's. He doesn't say. But once again, this is one of those Scott Peterson assumptions. Go, give it another watch at some point and just look at his assumptions and see if you can get any pattern around his assumptions. And then this is another one of those things to finish off that interview um, that I was talking about. Look, he has no reason to lie. In fact, it's in his interest to tell the truth because I'm guessing that, you know, the stuff, the clothes were in the washer. There is a glass of milk out there. There is some pizza lying around the house. And the way he deals with these Questions around the, the washer, the milk uh, and the pizza are so clean and simple, not anything extra compared to how he tells stories about what happened that morning when Lacey was supposedly there, what happened during the fishing trip as well, especially. That's the interview. What do you think? Um, dog and the cat followed me in, so I jumped out that window and the cat went over to it. Where was the mop bucket? Um, if you remember uh, our front door, there's a little white piece, wood piece uh -huh. built in, just in front of that. Okay, so uh, your dog and cat come in with, through the doors and your cat goes over to this bucket. Yep. And what, was it going to drink out of it? or Looked like it to me. So you just picked it up and walked it out the front door then? No, that little side door. Okay. So it was right outside of it. And then you just set it out there? No, it didn't set it there. Then what did you do? Um, put my clothes in the washer, took out those rags, threw my clothes in there. Were you calling for Lacey or? Oh yeah, of course. But she wasn't home? No. As soon as she's at her mom's. You're, you put your jeans, your blue t-shirt, anything else in there? I think that green pullover was in there too, wasn't it? Did you did you use did you start the washer? Yeah. Did you put soap? Mm -hmm. Uh oh. 
Okay, then what? Uh, grab some pizza from the fridge. Put the box out? Yeah, put it on the counter like it was. Uh, lots of milk. And jump in the shower. You had a glass of milk? No. Small one, yeah. Okay, but you put it in glass? Yeah. How much pizza did you have? Um, I think just one full piece, and then have a bite of another one. As I always like to do once I've done some analysis is go, what was missing there? What would we expect to hear that wasn't there? And once again, and this has happened every single time I've analyzed Scott Peterson, no emotion whatsoever. And not even a hint of emotion around how excited he was in the morning because it was Christmas Eve or he was going out on his boat for the first time. It's no emotion about that whatsoever. And none of the emotions that would go with someone whose eight-month-old wife and unborn child have both gone mysteriously missing. He expresses no emotion for anything at all, just no emotion and certainly no concern over what has happened to his wife. You look at it, he's a very practical person when he's talking, everything, there's no none of that emotion. It's all about the arrangements, it's all about the positioning of things, it's all about the reasons why things would have happened. None of it is really around emotion at all, it's all around practical certainly on this day it was all around practical why things happened where things happened that's very interesting as well so what are my conclusions on looking at scott peterson's police interview look that mopping story is super important to him when he's asked about what Lacey was doing that day, mopping is the first thing that comes up and he really knows where it happens in, in precise detail when he says when he talks about what happened when he comes home mopping or throwing out the mop bucket water is the first thing that he mentions as well. So the mopping really super high priority for him. The other thing I didn't like, he was vague on the details of first thing in the morning. I don't believe he has any real details of what was happening first thing that morning that he wants to share. But he can be very detailed where it help, when it helps him, like where was mopped, or the detail around that island that he saw when he was out there fishing. But he's light on detail in so many other places, like Lacey's plans for the day. Compared to the details around that island, which he could describe, Lacey was just gonna go some shopping. He didn't really give us lots of details whatsoever. My conclusion on analyzing Scott Peterson's first police interview it's a suspicious story. It does nothing to make me go, oh, this guy deserves the benefit of the doubt or this guy deserves a second chance. And how did you do with the task I set? When Scott was on the phone, he said something that said to me, huge red flag. What did you get? I got, he refers to my house and then realizes he's made a big mistake and corrects it very quickly to our house like this. Oh, I don't know where are you at now. In front of my, our house? Okay. In front of my, our house? Okay. That's it. If you've enjoyed this, then please share it with someone. Press the like button. Just help get the word out there. Commenting helps as well. So if you can comment on this platform uh, with whatever your thoughts are on Scott Peterson's police interview, that would be great. Don't forget to hit the subscribe or follow button if you want more episodes like this as soon as they drop. And that like button or the plus button goes a long way to helping this channel. Neveratruerword.com is the place to go if you want to find out more things Never A Truer Word, including more podcasts podcasts, more videos, and you can sign up for the weekly or monthly newsletter too. And we will see you soon for something new from Never A Truer Word.